Sex has contributed to a lot of people holding on to someone they should have let go of a long time ago. But it's also contributing to a lot of people having a disconnect in their relationship with someone that is actually good or good for them. And it creates this problem to where a lot of people now are experiencing unfulfilling, unhappy relationships or craving and desiring toxic people they used to have sex with because it felt so much better in the bedroom. But And all of that has created this perception that bad boys are better in bed. Now, some of you may agree, some of you may disagree as far as the perception existing. But the reality is that it does exist among some people. And it's a topic that we need to discuss. So I shot a podcast episode a couple years ago. Like I said, I'm releasing a series of my lost podcast episodes. This is episode number two. We talk about why bad boys are better in bed. We're going to cut to the clip, get right into it, and let's see what you think. Oh, and one more thing. After you watch this podcast episode, I do, as always, have an extra message at the end you need to listen to. So keep watching after this clip is done. Today, I want to start off with an interesting topic. Now, I know if you follow me on social media, you're thinking, oh, he's going to talk about healing or about women dating. Nah, nah, we ain't talking about none of that. None of that. I want to go in a completely different direction today. And today's topic is why bad boys are better in bed. Yes, we're going to talk about it because... I see so many couples suffering from a lack of of effective intimacy, a lack of of good sex. Let's just say what it is. So many people don't talk about these things the way that they need to. And there's a huge disconnect between men and women and the satisfaction or lack of satisfaction people are experiencing in their relationship. And what I've heard from a lot of different women is this belief or perception that the bad boy is, tends to be good, but the dude that they actually like, the guy who's the good guy they have might have some real feelings for, or at least they would want to be able to choose for a relationship, uh, he's coming up short. No pun intended. So let's shine a light on this topic. And let me say this before I continue. I, I'm not here to promote promiscuity. (laughs) I'm not here to tell you whether or not you should have sex before marriage. Because if y'all know, I'm a man of God. And yes, I do believe waiting is best. But I also believe in talking about the real issues and the things that you're facing. And so we can't ignore this and act like some of you guys aren't engaging. And I'm not going to act like I have not engaged. So we still have to have this discussion. So let's continue here. Why do good girls like bad boys better in bed why is this happening so i am someone who can say has lived the life of both a good guy and a bad boy and now i think i'm a combination of the two but let me give you a quick rundown on some history of what i've lived growing up i was the good guy i was very nice passive quiet extremely respectful whatever you want to call it i was all that good stuff and more and i wasn't getting no action (laughs) nothing was happening i'm not gonna sit there and say there weren't some women who liked me or i couldn't possibly have had some more success if i'd have been a little bit more uh outgoing or you know would have tried harder but Yeah, it wasn't really happening. And when you speak to a lot of guys like that, it's not really happening for them neither. All right. But then as time goes on, met a woman, caught feelings for her. You could say I fell in love, at least what I thought was love at the time. But I can look back now and say, no, wasn't it. And eventually she ended up getting with some guy. I was hurt. I ended up saying F the world. And that's when Savage Stefan came out. Now, I went from the good dude to a dude who did not care about what you think, how you feel. And, 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 not, and let me not say I didn't care about how you feel as in I'll put you in tears and not worry about it. I, I, I didn't care as long as I was honest with you. I told you what it was. I was straightforward. I was bold. You were either with it or you weren't. And let me say that during that phase of my life, getting women were easy getting action left and right without even trying, all right? 
So I started to see this energy. And that's a word you're going to hear from me a lot as you listen to this podcast and you watch my videos. The energy I was putting out as the quote unquote bad boy at that time, or at least giving off that bad boy energy was effective in a lot of ways. But, and this is especially for the men listening to this, that can only take you so far. All right, that stuff is, is all well and good if you're just trying to get some sex and you're just trying to have fun with some of you might be. So you might be like, well, that's that's all I care for. So this is great information. But no one, I want to encourage you that you got to look more. You got to look past that. You got to want more than that. Or you should embrace the value of something of substance. And that's the thing. When you're giving off that energy, when you're walking in that bad boy persona, you will hurt your ability to have the relationship of substance when you meet that woman you are truly in love with that bad boy stuff is going to cause a problem you've got to have a better balance which brings me to who i am today like i said i'm a mix i took the good stuff from the good guy i took the good stuff from the bad boy i put it all together and now here i am and so i had to give that quick little rundown before we get into the meat of this topic because that plays a lot into what I have seen and learned, as well as the fact that I coach and talk to so many people on a daily basis. So I'm not just pulling from my experiences. I'm looking at other people's experiences. I'm looking at the books I've read, the information I've studied. I'm putting it all together and I'm coming to you with this. Bad boys tend to be better in bed because one, they give off a more dominant energy in the bedroom and a lot of women i'm not going to say all women even though it could be argued but i'm going to say a lot of women enjoy when a man knows how to give that dominant energy now when i say dominant i do not mean abusive i don't mean anything that's going to land you in jail or cause a problem i'm simply saying that more masculine energy that energy that exudes a level of confidence in the bedroom that's not passive in the bedroom women want to see that out of their man of course to keep it in respectful in a respectful dynamic or not cross any negative lines but that's what many want and so the bad boy gives off that energy but understand why he's able to give off that energy because he's not really into you like here's the thing that a woman doesn't understand sometimes the same guy who can be the bad boy to 10 women will be the good guy to that one one woman he's really into. And then when he's really into you, what happens? He becomes more cautious. Now he's more concerned about how you feel. He's a little more hesitant. He's worried about if what he tries or when he tries to push the envelope, if it's going to be viewed as disrespectful. He doesn't want to scare you away. So now he may hold back in the way that he handles you in the bedroom. And that plays a huge role in the energy that he gives off. There are a lot of men out there who, again, their fear And the fear comes when there's a deeper emotional investment in that woman. Their fear now paralyzes them in being able to be more confident and more uh, assertive in that bedroom. But the bad boy doesn't have that concern. He's just there to have his fun, there to have his pleasure. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say it simply boils down to that every single time. But that does play a huge role. Now, why am I pointing this out? I'm pointing this out because if you are a woman and you're dating this guy who is a quote unquote good guy and he's lacking that assertiveness, he's lacking that dominance you want to see, that confidence. Sometimes it's not because he doesn't have it within him. It's because he doesn't know that he even has the green light to give it to you. He doesn't know that this is okay and that this is required or desired by you. So as a woman, you have to convey that good guy. Just don't jump ship and assume oh, he's not going to get it right. He's just not skilled in the bedroom. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Yes, some men lack experience. Some men just don't know their way around the bedroom, way around a woman's body. Granted, but all of these things can be learned. It's not rocket science, all right? But it's going to take communication. It's going to take patience. And if you're with someone who's not just good, because I'm not for just being with a guy or woman because they're a good guy, good woman. If this is a person you feel like you have a genuine connection with, 
then you don't give up on them simply because they weren't getting it right sexually initially. Now, you may say, well, you know couples who've been together and the sex has never been corrected. Because guess what? Most of them don't effectively communicate. And most of them wait till too late in the relationship to finally make it known where there's an issue sexually. You've got to address these issues early on in your relationship. Because the longer you allow it to linger, the harder you will make it to fix. So you cannot let this drag out. Make these things known. But that's with the guys. And so I want to now shift to the women. One of the biggest reasons why the bad boy is better in bed is because of you, the woman. What do I mean? When you're dealing with a guy that you have deep emotions, deep feelings for, you're emotionally invested, you're really in love, genuinely into him, you start to become concerned with a lot more things. You start to become more self-conscious. You might be a little more insecure. You're worried about what he thinks. Did he like it? What does he think about me? All these things are running through your head during your sexual experience. And guess what? All of that blocks your ability to enjoy the moment. All of that hinders you from experiencing an orgasm, from truly diving into the pleasure that he's providing at that moment, because your mind is the most powerful thing. And if your head is not in the right place, there's nothing that man can do to make it better. All right. You have to overcome that battle within your mind space in order to truly enjoy that experience. That might sound crazy to some of y'all, but it's real. It's real. Women who have learned how to enjoy sex at great levels learn how to master their minds. People talk about mastering your body. I'm not going to say that doesn't play any kind of role, but your mind is where it's at first. But let's think about you and the bad boy. Do you know why with the bad boy it tends to be better? Because with him, your feelings aren't involved like that. To you, that guy is a life-size dildo. Like, he's just your play toy. He's only there for your pleasure. So instead of you being concerned with all this stuff, you're diving into how it feels in that moment. You're diving into the excitement, the enjoyment, and you're not concerning yourself with all the other stuff which now unleashes the true potential of that sexual experience. So again, you really have to look at how you're coming into these experiences with the good guy versus the bad boy. And know that you have some power to shift the experience, to increase your level of enjoyment by learning how to get out of your head, number one. All right. You got to learn that. That is your, again, the biggest battle you're going to face. And when you can conquer that, everything else can fall into place from there. Number two, communicate, communicate, communicate. Now, some of you may be saying, well, listen, men don't take criticism well when it comes to the bedroom. All right. You're right. I get you. You, you have a great point. However, if you don't talk about it, like I said, it's going to become a problem. Let me paint this picture real quick. Woman meets a man. Man's a great guy. She's really, really into him. They date for a few months. They finally get sexual. The sex is just okay. All right. But she likes him so much and she does not want to run him away or ruin the chance of being with this guy. So she says nothing. All right. They move along. Years pass. They get married. Now they're married. He tries to have sex. You know what she says? I got a headache. The kids are here. I'm too busy. I'm too tired. She has every excuse in the book. Why? Because she really doesn't like it. It was never that good. This is what you set yourself up for when you say nothing to the good guy you really want to be with. All right. Or to the guy who you truly feel like you have a connection with. So you don't want to set yourself up for that kind of failure. Be honest. Be transparent. So, again, you got to get out your head. You got to be honest and communicate with this guy. And then you have to be patient. We live in a microwave society that wants great sex right away. They expect their partners to be fully experienced and know everything off the top of their head and how to do it. But again, if you're with someone you truly love, then understand that you can learn each other. And even when someone you meet is great at sex, 
We are evolving individuals. A time will come where they're still going to have to learn the new you, learn what you now like that you didn't like before. So we're always learning. So why not learn from the beginning? Why not be willing to walk each other through how to truly pleasure each other and make each other happy? When you embrace these things, you're going to see a greater success with that good guy. I don't want you guys running from the great guy who you should be with because of an issue that can be fixed. Take heed to this and understand that there is light at the end of this tunnel. But with every segment, let's go ahead and take a question that I can answer for you guys and help you along in your journey. Hey, Stefan. I recently found out that my boyfriend of 11 months has been cheating on me. When I confronted him about it, he said he was reaching out to other women because he wanted to do things he didn't think I'd be into. He didn't even ask if I would be into these things. But either way, I decided to stay and try to work it out. I can see he's trying and feels remorseful, but I still find myself very sensitive and easily triggered. I don't feel like celebrating the one-year anniversary because, you know, it feels tainted by his cheating and dishonesty. And I'm honestly very disappointed. We couldn't even have our own honeymoon phase. Am I being petty not wanting to celebrate our one year? All right. So there's a lot to uh, unpack in that situation. First, let me say, no, you're not being petty. All right. It's not petty. Your feelings matter. And if you're still hurting from the situation and you're not comfortable yet with your partner, then it's completely understandable that you're not really in the right mindset to celebrate an anniversary. However, the problem is, why are you back with him if you have not gotten over it or if you have not put it enough behind you and healed from it? Because I don't want you to put it behind you. I want you to actually heal from it. Why be in that relationship if you're going to be unhealed? Why be in a relationship if you're going to still be bothered by the situation? That means you're not ready to be there yet. So one, let's rewind a little bit. The issue started from what? A lack of communication. So as I explained earlier in this episode, you've got to be transparent. You have to let your partner know what you don't like. Now, in this scenario, this man didn't even give her a chance to see if she's willing to do what he wanted to get done. But you have to give your partner that opportunity. You have to talk to them. If they're not down for it, let's find out right away. Because if you don't resolve that early, then exactly what's going to happen is cheating. Every single time. This is not a rare situation. This is not an isolated incident. This is a reoccurring problem in many people's relationships and marriages because we don't talk about the things that we need and desire from our partner or we don't embrace them. And so it creates a huge disconnect, a huge void, and people will always try to fill that void somewhere else, some way, somehow. So you got to talk to your partner. But then two, when cheating has occurred, I'm not against getting back with the person who cheated on you. I'm not against forgiving him. I believe forgiveness is something that we should give people no matter what, because forgiveness is for us. It's not for them. It's for your peace. However, I do not believe in getting back with someone, regardless of what the issue is, when it has not been properly addressed, properly corrected, and you have not healed from the situation. Because now you're going to have a dysfunctional, toxic relationship. And that's exactly what's happening here. Now he's going to be salty because you don't want to celebrate the anniversary. Now that resentment is going to turn into him doing something stupid or him acting out in certain ways. See, initially the cheater might try to be in your good graces and try to have, be on good behavior. But at some point, if you aren't able to fully embrace giving them what they need and pouring positivity into that relationship, they will be back to cheating or they're going to leave you. One or the other, either way, it defeated the purpose of getting back together. So to wrap that up, no, you weren't petty, but you got to handle it better. You need to sit down and talk to him. You need to discuss these issues. You need to discuss, well, we already know why the cheating happened, how we're going to change it. Have you agreed to the things that he wanted? Because if there's still things he wanted and you're not down to do, then chances are there's still going to be a problem here. So we need to make sure all of that is resolved, that you get the help you need to truly come to peace with this situation. And if you need time, take your time. Sometimes we have to break up. Sometimes we need separation to kind of get our heads in the right place and come back together better and stronger. Nothing wrong with that. But again, it's better than just staying there, being miserable and unhappy, and more problems being created in that relationship. So... I hope you enjoy what you heard. 
or it, it provided some perspective for you. But there's another piece of this puzzle. There's actually a lot more pieces we can discuss. But one thing I felt the need to bring up before we wrap this whole video up is the idea that the other reason why, in many cases, the quote-unquote bad boy seems to be better in bed is a higher level of attraction. So what I mean by that is this. There are a lot of people who get with a quote-unquote good guy. And as I mentioned in the episode, I'm not really about pushing you towards the good guy. I want you to be with the right guy. But the reality is that in society, many women will try to embrace being with the good guy that they do like, that they are into, but that connection may not be there. And that higher level of attraction isn't there. That energy is not the same. So with the quote-unquote bad boy, aside from just the masculine energy and, and the way he comes across more dominant, more confident, more assertive, there's just a more natural sexual energy that exists there. There's a stronger natural attraction that exists there. And so this is why you have to be very careful to try to make it work with a guy that you don't have a strong enough attraction with. It doesn't mean that attraction is the only thing, all right? And please understand the difference between looks and attraction because sometimes we can meet individuals who don't necessarily look like our type or who don't fit the, 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 the list that we've had in our head. But we still find ourselves very much attracted to them. That's very important for the, for the success of the sexual relationship within uh, this romantic relationship or the sexual experience within this romantic relationship. So a lot of women, again, they sacrifice this attraction because this guy, this good guy, is safer. He, 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 I can trust that he won't cheat on me. At least you feel like he won't cheat on you because that doesn't always work out that way. I feel like I can, I, don't, I can let my walls down at least a little bit more because you're never really truly letting them all down and we will leave that for a completely different video. But the reality is that you still feel like the safe choice is the one to hold on to. And there's this movie I saw. I don't want to name it right now because I don't want to give it free promo. But the point is there's a movie I saw where the woman goes on to marry the safe choice. And the safe choice tries to be the bad boy or tries to mimic some of the actual physical experiences that this woman has had in her past. And even though it may be enjoyable to a certain extent, it never lives up to what she had with the other guy. Because again, the attraction or the connection is not there. It's not the same. So you've got to be very mindful of that because it's almost like you're, you're, giving the, you're forcing the guy to fight a battle he can't win. And only you know if there's real attraction there. Only you know if you have enough desire for this man to begin with. There's only so much he can do. Granted, there are some things he can do on his side to raise attraction, raise desirability. But if you're not communicating that, if you're not forthcoming about that, and you're not honest about are these correctable issues or is this really a dead-end situation, then you're only going to set yourself up for disaster. So I had to just add that to the mix of something else to consider in this whole dynamic of bad boys being better in bed. But again... Take your time to make sure you are getting with the right person. Take your time to make sure there's a connection. Make sure, I know this might sound crazy mentioning it right now, but talk to God about who you're going to get with, all right? Because when we get with the right person and we have the right foundation, everything else can fall into place. But when we try to do this on our own and pick who we just think we should make it work with, a lot of things go wrong and go left. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. Listen, I'm not asking no woman to pay half the bills. I'm not asking no woman to carry the financial burden. Hell, I don't even care for the woman to contribute financially. That's me. That's how I'm living my life.